It's my feel good breakfast show. A very warm welcome back to your Tuesday morning. This is Expresso on SABC3. Now, in her much-anticipated memoir, Sisonke Msimang writes about her exile childhood in Zambia and Kenya, young adulthood in college in, in uh, her years in North America, and then returning to South Africa in the euphoric 90s. And here to tell us more about her memoir, Always Another Country, and making her Expresso debut, ladies and gentlemen, Sisonke Msimang, yes! <laughs> Good morning to you and welcome. Thank you very Just much. Just had to give you that big rah-rah, because wow. it's your first time. Thank you. I'm very excited. And so you should be. I, I heard you got some very interesting advice from Joanne Strauss yes. backstage about. She said that I should keep my earrings asymmetric. It makes because, it, it makes an impression. Yeah, because I have options. <laughs> you know, it's good to have options. Love it, love it. But let's talk <laughs> about your your first baby, as you call it, your book, uh, Always Another Country, that um, chronicles your time, as I said, from Zambia to Kenya to North America, South Africa, now in Australia. Was it the travels to all these different places and these experiences that kind of egged you on to, to writing this book? Yeah, I mean, in a way, mm -hmm. I think um, part of the reason why I wrote this book is because I think as South Africans, we're so used to, because people are like, oh, you're so young. Why are you doing a memoir? Yeah, a memoir. You why know, now? Like, yeah. So I think as South Africans, we're used to hearing stories about like these great political figures and uh -huh. these like big heroes. And I think it's kind of time for us to think about storytelling as something ordinary and simple. So I wanted to tell like simple stories to say like, if you're an African, you don't, our stories don't only have to be like about child soldiers, uh -huh, you uh -huh, know, uh -huh, or about uh -huh, like big uh -huh. political heroes. You we can talk other about stories other kinds tell. of stories. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, talk to me about, about some of your achievements. You have, um, we, you have one of the, uh, a handful of young South Africans who have been given the opportunity to, to do a tech talk, which is something very intimidating. I've witnessed <laughs> people doing it before, but something that a lot of people take a lot of inspiration, motivation, and insight from. I know people are always very excited about the TED talk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's um very very hard, tough process. Yes. To prepare for a TED talk, mm -hmm. and I took it extremely seriously um, because I was nervous. Yes, I was petrified. Yes, yes. Um, so I probably wrote the talk six months before mm -hmm. I delivered it, mm -hmm. and then I just practiced it. I just put it on my headphones, I listened to myself speaking it, mm -hmm. I did it over and over, um, flew to San Francisco, it was amazing, people in black, you know, and with like headphones, and they're like, hi, how are you? And it's like a whole <laughs> big, huge production, um, but it was lots of fun. Yeah, coming back to the book, when people pick it up, and hopefully they'll be picking up thousands and thousands of copies and read it, in what format have you kind of put it together in terms of, do you tell it from a first person perspective, or yeah. is there a character that you attribute all of your characteristics to? Give me a bit of an insight. So there. it's very much like this coming of age story. So it, the, the book is, designed around chapters that are chron chronologically ordered around my life. Yes. So growing up in Zambia, and then we moved to Kenya, and it's basically, oh my gosh, the terrible photos. It's beautiful, we what love it. What is going on? Hashtag TBT. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, it's so good to get older. Wow. Um, <laughs> so basically, yeah, so it's chronological. And, mm. uh, and the kind of core of the book is about the relationship uh, between us as a family. It's yeah. about like this African family that's traveling all around the world and the backdrop is apartheid, the fact that we can't go home. And then of course finally in 1990, Nelson Mandela is released and in 1994 South Africa is free and we go home. And it's about how I navigate this new country of mine. Yeah. What do you want people to gain from this book when they read it? I understand that you're also somebody who's very vocal about uh, a lot of Afri issues that concern Africa. What do you want people to gain from the book? I guess partly what I said before, I want people to understand that all of our stories are important and all of them matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want people to come away with it thinking about what we as individual South Africans can do about our future yeah. um, collectively. So Excellent. that's that's the point. All right, so um, are there any plans to write more books going forward, books that will hopefully inspire the African child to start believing more and more in our stories, maybe even turning that book into a movie or a series? Something yeah, like when I was writing the book, my husband insisted that I put him in the book because he was like, when they make a movie, then they can cast Brad Pitt as me. And they're not gonna make a movie about it unless there's a white guy in it. So you gotta put me in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. Uh, on that note, thank you so, so much for You're joining welcome. us. And good luck with the sales of the book. I hope that thank they do you. amazingly well. It's called Always, Always Another, Country. Another Country by Sison Gensmanga. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you. There you go.